Welcome back. So we've been talking about linear systems of differential equations like uh, x dot equals ax, where a is a matrix and x is a vector. And we've recently seen that it may be possible to take a nonlinear differential equation, some, some truly nonlinear differential equation, uh, x dot equals f of x, where f is a nonlinear function of x, and at least approximate it locally you, by a linear system near a fixed point. So kind of near uh, a fixed point, a fixed point uh, x bar, where uh, f of x bar equals zero. So precisely, um, if we have some fixed point where ddt equals zero at that fixed point, then in a small little epsilon neighborhood of that point, we might be able to approximate those dynamics locally as a linear system. And uh, I want to kind of tell you about one really, really powerful kind of idea or theorem for dynamical systems, which gives us a lot of insight into when this is possible and when this is not possible. Um, and so this is called the Hartman-Grobman theorem. Uh, maybe I'll do green because I like green. The Hartman-Grobman Hartman theorem. I'm not going to prove this theorem. I'm just going to give you kind of a sneak peek of what it means for these linearizations and when it's possible and things like that. Okay, so the big idea here is that if, okay, so, so essentially, how do I want to say it? Um, we, we know even more than just we can approximate x dot equals f of x with a linear system. We know that this A matrix is equal to the derivative of f with respect to x. This is a matrix of partial derivatives. This is a Jacobian matrix uh, evaluated at, at x bar. And specifically, the Hartman-Grobman theorem says that um, if all eigenvalues if all the eigenvalues lambda of A have non-zero real part, have non-zero real part, meaning they have the form lambda equals A plus or minus IB, where A is not equal to zero, these are called hyperbolic uh, fixed points. So if all eigenvalues of lambda of A have non-zero real part, these are uh, called these are called hyperbolic fixed points. Called hyperbolic. I'll tell you why they're called hyperbolic in a minute. Literally, it's because they have stable and unstable directions, and say so they look like you know hyperboloid points, hyperbolic points. If all of the eigenvalues are hyperbolic, so we have a hyperbolic fixed point x bar uh, like this, then uh, locally for small neighborhood uh, around x bar, then the linearized dynamics, then the linearized uh, system, the linearized dynamics, given by this, you know, x dot equals ax, it has, so we call this topological conjugacy uh, or topologically equivalent, but what I mean is then locally for a very small neighborhood around my fixed point, these linear dynamics are kind of smoothly, deformably equivalent to the dynamics of the true, honest-to-goodness nonlinear system. Then locally for small neighborhood around x, uh, around x bar, then the linearized dynamics x dot equals ax are kind of faithfully representative uh, faithfully representative of the full nonlinear system. I'm being intentionally vague here. This is a very precise mathematical theorem, and it's, it's, it requires technical language to say it very precisely, and it requires even more technical language to prove that it's true. But I'm going to draw you a picture and tell you what I mean. What I mean is that if I have some fixed point, uh, and maybe I'll actually draw um, you know, I'll draw one in blue for my nonlinear system. And let's say I, over here, I linearize 
that nonlinear system to find this A matrix, and I check that all of the eigenvalues of this A matrix are hyperbolic, meaning they have non-zero real parts. So they all have either a positive or a negative real part. A is either positive or negative, but not zero for all of my eigenvalues. I'm just gonna draw an example. So let's say it has a, a stable eigenvector with a stable eigenvalue, and let's say it has an unstable eigenvector with an unstable eigenvalue. So again, that would be a hyperbolic fixed point, a saddle point, because in this direction A is negative, and in this direction A is positive, but A is never zero for either of my eigenvalues. Then the hartman grobman theorem says is that my full-blown super-duper nonlinear system, at least near this fixed point, is going to look very, very similar structurally, it's gonna have the same kind of stable and unstable direction coming out of it that my linearization does. Now they might be curved, I might have a curved stable manifold, and I might have a curved uh, unstable manifold, but locally kind of the topology of trajectories, things are gonna do saddle type things um, in my system, just like here, in my linearization, it's doing saddle type things. Okay, so this is kind of neat. Um, and there are reasons why we need this technical theorem because it's not obvious that the, we, we did a Taylor series expansion of f of x to, to, to actually derive this condition for this linearization in the last lecture. And we don't know for a fact that those quadratic and cubic and quartic and, and those higher order powers of x don't totally break this linear behavior and cause it to do something crazy. And what hartman grobman says is that for hyperbolic systems, small perturbations don't structurally change the basic structure of the stable and unstable manifolds of this linearization. So even if I add a little epsilon quadratic, an epsilon cubic, an epsilon quartic uh, to that linearization, structurally in a zoomed in window, it doesn't change the basic shape of everything. And if I zoom in close enough, it'll actually look exactly like this system. So it basically gives me a condition for when I can structurally, I can expect structural robustness of my linearization, even when I add those small epsilon and epsilon squared nonlinear terms from my Taylor series. That's kind of what hartman grobman is saying. This does not work for center points. hartman grobman explicitly says it only has to work for these hyperbolic points if A equals zero, if I have a center fixed point, if my linearization has eigenvalues plus or minus I, so that my linearization is literally just these concentric circles in a center, when I add an epsilon cubic to this, I could easily break this uh, kind of symmetry and get something that's either stable, you know, a stable sink or an unstable source just by adding those teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny epsilon, arbitrarily small epsilon quadratic and cubic and quartic terms. And so center points and points that are non-hyperbolic are not always structurally stable. So this uh, hyperbolic points are what are called structurally stable. This is structural stability. Um, structural stability for these hyperbolic points, for things like saddles. Um, if I had something that was a pure source, it would remain a pure source locally near that fixed point because all of my eigenvalues would have positive uh, real part and it would be a hyperbolic fixed point. But these uh, centers do not have structural stability and the hartman grobin does not guarantee that the nonlinear uh, system near that fixed point looks anything like the linearization. And this is like, there are whole really interesting classes on dynamical systems and differential equations that only focus on this weird case of non-structurally stable center manifold bifurcations. Like this is one of my favorite fields of dynamical systems is what can go wrong for center directions, for center fixed points. If you, you know, perturb the system or breathe on the system the wrong way, how does it break? And that's really, really interesting uh, in dynamical systems theories to 
understand things like bifurcations. It turns out, you know, as you increase the Reynolds number of a fluid flow, sometimes you have these bifurcations occurring. But the Hartman-Grobman guarantees that for this large class of systems where we have hyperbolic fixed points, where we have stable and unstable manifolds and nothing else, or stable and unstable eigenvectors and, and no neutrally stable eigenvectors, then you get this structural stability at least zoomed in close to that fixed point. Away from that fixed point, all bets are off. I could have, you know, this saddle point here, and it could, you know, do something funky, and there could be a fish orbit over here. I mean, I was just, you know, having fun drawing stuff. But away from that fixed point, all bets are off. But zoomed into that fixed point, structurally, it's going to look like the linearization for these hyperbolic fixed points. That's the Hartman-Grobman theorem, and it's a huge deal in dynamical systems. And it's what gives us, it's the theoretical foundation for why we can linearize and why we can expect these linearizations to mean anything at all for our nonlinear systems. Really, really important stuff. Um, and I'll point out uh, a couple of things. So if sometimes I call these stable and unstable subspaces, so I will call this like a stable subspace. And literally, the span of all of my eigenvectors, the span of all my eigenvectors, Cjs, corresponding to stable lambda Js, meaning for those lambda j's, my a was negative, they're stable eigenvalues. Those span, all of those eigenvectors span, you know, I can only draw in two dimensions because I'm a puny human and we can only see in really in two dimensions. But this could be, you know, there could be multiple stable eigenvectors of a higher dimensional A matrix. Those will span a subspace where anything in that subspace will be coming into the origin because it's got stable eigenvalues. Similarly, the span of all of my unstable eigenvectors form my unstable subspace. It's the span of all of my unstable eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalues with a positive. And again, that's going to be a subspace in general of many eigenvectors. Anything in that subspace is going to flee from the origin. And so generally what happens is trajectories, generic trajectories will adhere. They'll come in on the stable directions and then flee out on the unstable directions. And what's interesting, the Hartman-Grobman theorem also says, sorry, the stable and unstable manifold theorem, which are very closely related to the Hartman-Grobman theorem, say that even in the nonlinear system, locally, you have these things called, so if I had a stable subspace, now I have a stable manifold. And it's a curved version of this subspace spanned by these eigenvectors. Similarly, I have a unstable manifold. And what's really cool is that at that fixed point, the tangent to the stable and unstable manifolds agree with my stable and unstable subspaces. So my stable manifold is like locally tangent to that, to that stable subspace, and my unstable manifold is locally tangent to my unstable subspace. Now, you know, away from the origin, they can start to curve and warp and deform, but this kind of structural stability says not only is the kind of topology and shape uh, preserved for small radii zoomed into that fixed point, but even the tangent directions are preserved, which is really, really cool, really, really useful. And you can actually use this uh, idea to take this local linearization and actually continue out and get a formula for these stable and unstable manifolds. That's really powerful and really cool. And again, this is like a whole field of dynamical systems. Um, you know, like every practically sentence I'm telling you here is like a whole lecture on dynamical systems that you could be building up a real intuition for these things. Maybe I'll make a series on that someday. Um, this is kind of just a teaser that fits into my differential equations uh, lecture series. Maybe I'll give you a quick example of how to find that, that stable manifold, um, or at least I'll, I'll draw a picture of it. I think I've drawn a nice picture here for you. Um, but what you could do is you could essentially, let's say I have a differential equation, um, maybe I'll write it in blue, something like uh, x dot equals x, that's clearly unstable, and y dot equals minus y, 
plus x squared. So this is actually a pretty good example here. This is a saddle point linearly. If I just look at the linearized dynamics, there's a saddle point at the origin. But this nonlinear term is doing weird things to my, my stable and unstable manifold. So the linearized system here is going to have an unstable x direction, an unstable x direction, and a stable y direction. OK, that's what the linearized fixed point's going to look like. And so what I claim is that the nonlinear system is going to be locally tangent. It's going to have a stable and unstable direction locally tangent to those. But I'm going to claim that the unstable manif sorry, the the, 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 the part that's tangent to this uh, x vector here is going to be curved like this. Okay, so it's gonna, there's going to be some curved manifold here. Uh, and I, actually, I'm going to call this, this is actually going to be called the stable uh, manifold because it's like literally what everything's attracting onto. So, so it's actually s attracting on stably to this manifold. And then trajectories are going to be carried away uh, on this manifold. And you can solve for the functional form of this manifold by just literally saying it has, you know, it's some y equals phi of x. That is what this, this manifold is, you know, y equals phi of x, at least locally. And then I can plug this into my differential equation. I can say, well, okay, you know, y dot equals phi prime of x, x dot. So I can literally, I could take a power series expansion, c naught plus c one x plus c one x squared plus dot dot dot. And I can compute phi prime, just compute its derivative, times x dot, which is times x. That's one way to write this. But the other way to write it is that it also has to satisfy the y dot equation. And so it would also have to satisfy minus phi of x plus x squared. And if you take these two expressions, this, this power series, and you plug it in here and here and set them equal, you're going to find something to the effect of phi of x equals like one third x squared is this, uh, this stable manifold. And so you can actually derive uh, formulas for these stable and unstable manifolds um, you know, using the dynamics and using these power series expansions locally. That's a, a pretty big industry in dynamical systems is to actually write these things out and actually extend these linear and, uh, and th th these, these stable and unstable subspaces in into manifolds. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, really, really powerful. Again, that's a whole class on dynamical systems after this class on differential equations, but something to look forward to. Lots of rich dynamics here, lots of really cool pictures and geometry. Um, and the Hartman Grobman is probably the most important theorem here that connects these linearizations to nonlinear systems. Again, only valid in general for these hyperbolic fixed points. Okay, um, that was what I wanted to tell you. Thank you.